Hey there, DeFi adventurers. Welcome back to another Morales Masterclass Series video. I'm Phil, head of research at Morales, and I am delighted to bring you the second edition in this awesome web series. Here, we're going to be going deep on Gnosis Chain. Gnosis Chain, formerly branded XDI Chain, has been on the scene for a long time. And it has a unique advantage where its utility asset, meaning the asset used to pay gas on the network, is itself a stablecoin. As a result, businesses are more easily able to plan gas costs throughout the year, whether that has to do with deployment, different DeFi strategies, or other things they plan to use the network for. Today, we're going to take our first look at Gnosis DeFi. If this is your first Morales Masterclass series video, we move pretty quick, so strap in, hit the like and subscribe, and feel free to pause, go back, or re-watch any portion of this as we continue. So without any further ado, let's DeFi. In this Morales Masterclass, we're going to be taking a close look at Gnosis Chain, a community-run blockchain with a lot of advantages for business planning due to gas being paid in the stablecoin DAI, referred to as XDAI within the Gnosis ecosystem. To get started with Gnosis Chain, we're going to take a look first at Honeyswap, a long-standing AMM protocol and major player in the Gnosis ecosystem. Okay, so if that's your first time hearing the term AMM, you might be a little confused. AMM stands for Automatic Market Maker Protocol. An AMM protocol is essentially an on-chain exchange protocol that allows us to trade cryptocurrency assets without giving away custody of our assets in the meantime. We're going to demonstrate this in just a second. But before we do, as a side note, HoneySwap is more than just an AMM. It has grown to become a full AMM aggregator and possibly the best stop for exchange on Gnosis. Let's take a close look. Selecting the link at the top allows us to connect our MetaMask wallet. Now, unlike our first masterclass, where we used a 100% software wallet that was specific to the blockchain we were connecting to, MetaMask is a universal wallet. Some components of MetaMask are also powered by Morales. Here we select the account we want to use and then connect. Next, by selecting the network menu, we need to select the Gnosis network in order to continue. Okay, so before we perform our first swap on HoneySwap, a couple notes on MetaMask. MetaMask is the number one Web3 wallet worldwide. Now, it doesn't work with every single network, but it is compatible with all EVM networks. These are networks that follow the computational standard established by Ethereum. You can trust that anytime somebody's using MetaMask directly, they're interfacing with one of these kind of networks. If you're looking for deep details on how to set up MetaMask for the first time, and maybe even how to connect a hardware wallet like I'll be using later on, all of that is available in our Morales Money Pro plan, along with some of the best tools in the industry to give you the edge that you want and need going into this next cycle. If you're interested in that, check out the link below for a special trial offer. All right, let's get back to the lesson. Here we see that our wallet is already funded with a small amount of XDAI. Before we get going, we're going to go ahead and reinforce our balance, sending some assets from our Arbitrum wallet over to Gnosis. It's important to note that both of these assets are secured by the same public address and set of private keys. So all we're doing is changing the location of the assets using a protocol called HOP, one of many bridge protocols available today. Here we'll select the maximum amount for bridging. Notice that there's a small amount of slippage. Here we select send in order to initiate the transfer, selecting confirm and then signing with our hardware wallet. We need to wait for a few confirmations before the assets will be available on the destination chain. The visual interface provides confirmation throughout the process. Selecting the link, takes us to the block explorer where we can see that the transaction has already been confirmed by the sequencer. Since we're moving from an L2 network, we're waiting for confirmation on L1 before the bridge transaction completes. We should also take note that this isn't the only onboarding option to Gnosis. There are many other bridges available as well as central exchanges that support 
withdrawing assets directly to Gnosis Chain. Using one of those methods is just as good as it puts us in the same place with a funded wallet at the end. After a few minutes, the transfer completes successfully. Selecting the link to the Gnosis Block Explorer, we can see confirmation of the transaction on Gnosis Chain now. Selecting our own address brings us to our account page, where we can see that our assets are now available on Chain. Returning to the HoneySwap interface, we can now begin to swap these assets, along with any others that are in our wallet. We're not planning on keeping any stablecoin in our wallet after today's procedure, so we'll start by swapping some of our USDT for additional XDAI. Since USDT and XDAI are both stablecoins, we should expect that we'll receive about the same amount on the to side as we select on the from side. Let's see if this rings true. Sure enough, the slippage is minimal. Selecting Approve USDT prepares to swap the specified amount of assets. Here we see that the wallet is asking for what's effectively an infinite approval. We can modify this and specify only the amount that we're holding right now for security's sake. Specifying this amount will ensure that once that amount has been spent from our wallet by this protocol, an additional approval will be needed in order to spend more. After signing the first transaction with our wallet and following confirmation, the swap option illuminates. Notice the various routes provided below. Here we see that HoneySwap has grown beyond a simple AMM protocol and now includes routing options through outside contracts. The current contract is actually provided by SushiSwap with HoneySwap providing a worse exchange rate. Here we select Swap, taking the best route available and then select Confirm before signing with our wallet as before. Next, we want to explore some on-chain DeFi. We select the farming link on top to see what incentivized options are available, connecting our account to the dashboard to continue. Selecting the farm option on the left provides a list of pools along with the current yield estimate. The yield rates are in addition to any appreciation of the native assets themselves. In this case, we'd be working with wrapped ETH and wrapped Bitcoin within a liquidity position. In order to participate, we need to have the wrapped ETH, wrapped BTC asset. We can secure this through HoneySwap. Here we'll swap 15 USDT for wrapped BTC to start with. Selecting the swap amount and taking note that our assets are already approved for spending per our previous approval. Here we confirm swap and sign with our wallet in order to process the transaction. Here we encountered an issue when attempting to swap. However, when viewing the block explorer, the transaction is still pending. We'll attempt the swap again to see if the behavior is the same. The second attempt goes through as expected Notice the amount that we receive is slightly less. This may account for the initial failure as the composition of the pool changed between our initial request and the execution period. With 15 USDT remaining in our wallet, we need also to secure wrapped ETH on the other side, specifying 15 again, our remaining USDT balance, and then swap as before, and then select and confirm. With equivalent amounts of both wrapped ETH and wrapped BTC in our wallet, we can proceed to provision a liquidity pool around the two assets. Here we select Add Liquidity to continue, selecting wrapped ETH on the top side and wrapped BTC on the bottom. Here we'll specify the max amount of wrapped BTC. This automatically specifies an equivalent amount of wrapped ETH. Notice there's a small discrepancy. This is common. So long as the amounts are close, selecting the asset with the slightly smaller amount will automatically specify an equivalent amount on the other side. Here we need to approve wrap BTC for spending. Rather than the unlimited approval, we'll select max to specify only the amount that we're holding, and then next, and then approve before signing with our wallet. With wrapped BTC now approved for spending, the supply option illuminates and we select it, and then select confirm supply and then confirm from within our MetaMask wallet before signing with our hardware wallet. With our liquidity provisioned, returning to Honeycomb allows us to deposit those assets within the pool using the stake function. Now that our LP assets are detected, the stake option illuminates. Here we'll select 100% of our liquidity for deposit and the maximum time frame, up to 120 days at the current protocol 
settings. This is a relatively long time, so you may want to adjust this based on your own strategy preferences. Here we select Approve. Seeing the max amount is already input for us, we select Next, Approve, and then sign with our hardware device. With our assets approved for spending, processing a deposit transaction, stakes our liquidity position within the Honeycomb protocol. Finally, selecting the My Wallet tab at the top shows our newly staked pool alongside any existing pools we established previously. So far, we've exchanged some assets using Honeyswap. We've put those assets together in a liquidity position, and we've staked that liquidity position within a farming protocol. But we're still holding quite a bit of gas in our wallet, so what can we do with that? Well, like many DeFi protocols, Gnosis Chain is home to a liquid staking protocol that allows us to stake the utility asset XDAI in order to earn some additional rewards during a time when those assets would just otherwise be sitting dormant. In order to do this, we're gonna take part in the liquid staking protocol provided by Agave Finance. Connecting our wallet to begin. Once connected to the DAP, we select the SDAI link at the top. Here we'll take 10 of our DAI assets and deposit those in order to convert them to SDAI, the staked equivalent asset. Here, selecting deposit. We don't need to process an approval transaction in this case because we're working with the native utility asset. Whenever you're working with a native utility asset, approval is assumed. All we need to do is process the spending transaction. Selecting confirm and then signing with our hardware wallet. Next, we select Finish. In addition to providing a liquid staking protocol for DAI, Agave is also a lending protocol. And so for that reason, we can deposit our newly created SDAI in order to earn additional rewards as those assets are lent out to other network participants. Scrolling to the bottom, we'll select Deposit, and here we'll deposit about half of what we're holding, 4.7833 one to be exact. Selecting deposit. First we need to approve the assets for spending like before. Our desired amount is pre-populated for us, so we accept that, select approve, and sign with our hardware device. With the assets approved for spending, we're ready to select deposit. Confirming the pre-populated amounts and signing with our wallet as before. Notice the health factor. This is a visual representation of our loan to deposit ratio. Since we're not taking out any loans right now, our health factor sits heavily to the green side. Selecting go to my account gives a breakdown of our current positions, as well as a preview of our claimable rewards. This is expected to grow over time. Okay, so, so far we've participated in some basic DeFi strategies on Gnosis Chain, we've set up a liquidity position, we've staked it, and we've even staked some utility asset. Well, there's a special caveat to Gnosis Chain that we haven't addressed yet, and that's that the governance asset is actually different from the utility asset. This is a separate paradigm from what we find in places like Ethereum, where ETH is used for both. In this case, GNO secures the network. So let's take a look at how we swap some of our utility assets for governance assets and then stake those to earn additional rewards. In this stage of testing, we're going to be using StakeWise. Now, before we can stake GNO assets, we have to first secure them. So that's going to take us back to HoneySwap. Over on HoneySwap, we'll specify $10 of our remaining XDAI assets and perform a swap, selecting Confirm Swap from the bottom then confirm and approving with our hardware device. Next, returning to StakeWise, we'll proceed to stake those assets within the protocol, selecting Start Staking to begin. Here we have the option to stake directly through the interface. Selecting Max will specify the maximum amount of GNO for staking. Here we see that we're about to receive SGNO, so let's compare the amount of SGNO we would receive if we just performed a native swap using HoneySwap. Here we see the return is significantly worse. This indicates favorable conditions for anybody looking to produce SGNO within the Gnosis chain system. And so we'll proceed to do that, agreeing to the terms and conditions and selecting approve GNO. Take note here of the amount that we're holding before performing this procedure. 
and then selecting next and approve, then signing with our wallet. Once approved, we're prompted to approve the deposit transaction as well, selecting confirm and then signing again. Returning again to HoneySwap, we see that if looking to swap back and forth between SGNO and GNO, the liquidity is rather thin, meaning in either direction, you're experiencing significant slippage. Here we see the current price impact of 6.25%. This suggests that there's an opportunity here to reinforce the liquidity between those two pairs and earn additional rewards based on the trades between them. In these next steps, we're setting up a liquidity pool just like before, but this time we're trying to take advantage of the fact that the staking protocol only supports moving assets in a certain direction, which we're going to show in a second. We're going to produce the ability to move them in the other direction using the liquidity that we provide. Why would we do this? Well, to earn fees from people who are wanting to go that other direction, the direction not supported by the protocol. Let's take a look at how we set this up basically, knowing that the utility of our pools is going to be heavily affected by the amount of assets that we contribute. Either way, the steps we show will give a great overview of the process. Here, in order to complete our DeFi steps for today, we'll secure $2 more in GNO, selecting swap and then confirm before signing with our wallet. With some additional GNO now in our wallet, we're ready to set up our liquidity positions between the different forms of GNO assets. Here we see that while our staked GNO is labeled SGNO, the reward asset RGNO can also be converted to SGNO at any time using the protocol. However, conversions in the other direction are not possible. However, swaps in this direction are. So our first step here is to re reinforce liquidity between these two pairs in order to hopefully benefit from any trades that take place going the opposite direction. Selecting pool, create pair, RGNO on the top side and GNO on the bottom. The current composition of the pool is rather one-sided, meaning it's holding significantly more RGNO than GNO. In each case, our goal is to seed liquidity against the GNO asset. We'll use half of our GNO to start with and whatever amount is populated on the top side, approving both assets before continuing. With both assets approved for spending, we're ready to supply liquidity to the first pool, selecting supply and then confirm supply and then confirm before signing with our wallet. With our first pool established, we'll switch to SGNO on the top side, contributing the remaining amount of GNO after approving SGNO for deposit as well. Selecting supply and confirm supply as before. With those two pools established, we'll add in one more for good measure, this time combining SGNO and RGNO, selecting 0.01 .01 on the top and bottom side, and then selecting supply. We can be sure that this is a good rate to set up the pool at because it's more or less the same as what we would get when exchanging through the protocol. Selecting create pool and supply establishes our pool position. With our three new liquidity pools established, the routes between RGNO and GNO are also reinforced. Since some of the pathways that are being used here are brand new, with our three GNO related liquidity pools established, we are now ready to earn from any trades which take place on HoneySwap by users attempting to return GNO to either RGNO or SGNO. Granted, some of these functions can be done via the protocol, but certain functions would need to be done via the liquidity positions that we established. Thanks for sticking with me to the end. So those last steps with the multiple forms of GNO in different liquidity pools is rather experimental. Whether or not those pools actually earn rewards is going to be affected a lot by how many trades take place. And there's no guarantee that we're going to see enough to make up for the effort that we put in. That said, you have to take risks in order to earn rewards, and calculating risk is an important part of my DeFi adventure. If you want to learn more about that, the Morales Money Pro community is the best place. Like I said before, there's a link down below to get you started, and I look forward to seeing you there. If nothing else, join me for the next Morales Masterclass Series video so we can learn even more about the world of DeFi. Have a great day.